Aaron Honey Masood and Sanji Lopez. Our executive director is Julie Crosby. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. The sun's shining, birds are singing, and all feels right in the world. 91.3 Until FM, the season WBNY, changes, and suddenly everything seems darker, less lively, and you lose your motivation to get out of bed. If you struggle with depression, you're not alone. In fact, one in five people experience some form of depression, and no matter the time of year, it may affect your behavioral or physical ability to live a happy life. At the American Psychiatric Association Foundation, we understand what you're going through, and we're here to help. Our vision is to build a mentally healthy nation for all, because we want you to live your best life and be your best you all year round. We work every day to eliminate stigma, combat mental illness and substance use disorders, and advance mental wellness. If you or someone you love needs help, you are not alone. Please visit mentallyhealthynation.org to learn more. 91.3 FM WBNY is proud to present Democracy Now! with Amy Goodman. Welcome to Democracy Now! Award-winning investigative journalism. Is the NRA imploding? Providing relevant analysis that makes you think. Secret State Department documents, including evidence of U.S. war crimes. Fact-finding reports you will not hear elsewhere. Democracy Now! airs Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. on 91.3 FM, WBNY, Buffalo. Living for the people. This is L. Nathan here. Welcome to our broadcast, focused on providing you insight into events shaping our national and regional world and the facts behind those events and policies that are shaping our world for today and for tomorrow. Join us weekly on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. following Amy Goodman's Democracy Now! program. And of course, you know our program is live, so you can call and you can join our discussion. We really hope that you will. Our number here again is 716 878 5104. That's 716 878 5104. I want to give a shout out to our producer, James Braun. He's home, he's resting. Right. Hopefully, he's getting better. Look forward to talking to him uh, in the next couple of th uh, uh, three days. Uh, we want to welcome our in studio audience of one, Norm MacArthur. <laughs> welcome, Norm. Uh, good morning, Mr. Hare. Outstanding. And of course, we have our first citizen of the 21st century who understands all of the engineering and technology that you need to produce these programs live stream. Uh, Willie H., welcome, Willie. Yes, this is an exciting time, Mr. Hare. I'm doing a lot of um, PA um, events now, and I'm, I'm feeling good about that because I love to do that, as well as I love to do this also. But guys, you can call us in. 716-878-5104. That's 716-878-5104. So I, I want to take today's program. I want to talk a little bit about the situation that continues to exist in Ukraine. I want to talk about this in the context of the NATO summit. The NATO is the North Atlantic Treaty Organization uh, that was formed to help defend Europe and the United States from the possibility of further Soviet Union aggression after World War II. Uh, I, I want to talk about that in the context of history as a concept, Yeah, you know, a, a, as, as a paradigm. It, 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 it is so irritating and it, it wrenching that you have people in this country who are using the, the, the artifacts or the tools of democracy to destroy democracy in every way that they can. Now they say that you can't teach the the history of <laughs> the the Tulsa race riot. Now this I think it was 1921. Uh, the, the Tulsa race, Tulsa, Oklahoma. There was a portion of Tulsa, Oklahoma, like a 17 square block area that was a, um, a, a, a virtually 99 percent African people lived in this area. It was a commercial center. Now, all the African people that lived in Tulsa didn't live in, you know, uh, the, the Black Wall Street area. That I think they called it Greenwood. Mm -hmm. All of the black people that lived in Tulsa didn't live in Greenwood. But everybody who was black who lived in Tulsa all did commerce in Greenwood. 
Wow. It, it was their downtown. Wow. You know, so that's where they bought their bridal dresses, their flowers, you know, their hardware, yeah. their I didn't groceries. know about Greenwood, Mr. Hare, until I saw the movie, which was, what, what, 10 years ago? Right, right, right. And the importance of it is that uh, w- w- the, the reason why this took place was because you had a, well, fundamentally, in my view, you had a recession going on in the macro economy of the United States. Yes. So whenever recession happens, it means that people who have a lot wind up being able to hold on to more, and the people that have a little wind up being like they got pneumonia. <laughs> they're, mm-hmm. they're, they're in real trouble. Right. And so when people are in trouble, they start looking for places to get stuff to help them get out of trouble. Mm-hmm. So if what I need to get out of trouble is more money, more food, more clothes, more groceries, uh, easily to uh, uh, access, mm-hmm. and I see you over there, and you got bicycles mm. and pianos, and you got bridal dresses, and you got flowers, wow. and you got all kind of hardware. Uh, you know, you got all kind of stuff, and and we, we got recession going on, and you're living large, right? And you're black, and you're black. How you how how can you be living large and be black, and we're white and we're not living large? Right. And there's a whole lot of us. There's only a few of you. Right. <laughs> and we surround you. Right. What makes you think that you could walk away with your stuff and we're not going to take it from you? Right. We well, don't worry about it. We're going to take it from you anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, so, so they, don't t- they don't want you to talk about this in a, a racial context. Not only take away, but willing to kill you and anybody right. else that gets right. in the way. I mean, you know, Chautauqua is a big county in terms of its landmass, but only eight people live in Chautauqua County. Mm-hmm. So you got places that are like really wealthy places, you know, around Chautauqua Lake and so on. If a recession happened in the United States and poor people in Chautauqua County turned around and began to invade and attack the people that lived in Chautauqua Lake, the, the, the border area around Chautauqua Lake and stealing those rich people's houses, you know, you'd have hell and high water being, you know, yeah. brought down, right? There'd be right. fire coming from the sky. Everybody would, you can't do that. Well, that's what happened to the, the 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 black people in Tulsa, Oklahoma, right? You had people that wanted stuff. Tulsa, Oklahoma looked like it had stuff, and they wanted to take the stuff from them. They they didn't get it. Now they made the litmus test. You know, some white woman said that she was you know tickled pink by some black guy. Whatever it is, they said you know was the the presenting issue. You know, for this, they arrested this black guy. The black people in Tulsa said, no, this is not right. This he, this person had nothing to do with. Mm-hmm. The, I don't even know if the crime you said t- took place, you said took place. I'm not even sure that a crime actually took place. Right. You're just saying this, right? right? And uh, on the basis of that, you know, you can't come and just steal somebody and then imprison them and maybe murder them. This is not going to happen. So you got dudes that came out of World War I. Remember, it's 1921. World War One right. ends, you know, in this time period. Right. So you got dudes that come out of World War One, and they still got their uniforms. Right. They still got their handguns. They Uh-oh. still got their rifles. Uh oh. They showed up and they said, "No, no, you you're not you're not taking him." Right. So the white folks went. They fought in World War One too. <laughs> they had their uniforms. And they have more. Can, and can they have be, more. Let me. Let's be blunt, right? Right. They, right. They, let's they, tell the whole story. That's correct. They, they had their their ammunition, right. and uh, their own people would be giving them stuff. They wouldn't have to buy the stuff. They right. would. They would be giving stuff, you know, from their own people. Right. And they attacked the entire black community of uh, Greenwood in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Mm-hmm. The entire black community. Wow. Okay. Now, you're surrounded by all white people because you're in a city, and surrounding your city are all these rural areas mm-hmm. that are 100% or 99.1% uh, 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 white people. Right. And those people align with the white people in Tulsa, Oklahoma, against the black people. Mm-hmm. You got no shot at winning this war, mm-hmm. right? And that's what happened. They burned a 17-square-block area of Tulsa, Oklahoma, Mm. to the ground. They bombed it from the air. Mm. The first time since the airplane was invented that bombs were dropped from the air Mm. on citizens 
of the United States. It showed the hate and, and the cooperation that they had. The hate and the cooperation. And it had. shows that in this country, when they use the word citizen, they spell it the same way, but they don't mean the same thing. Right. When they're talking about black people versus talking about white people. And for that matter, if you were an Asian person, they they actually wrote a uh, uh, a uh, a Chinese exclusion act that said that Chinese people who had lived in the United States for four generations, that they were enemies of the United States mm. on the basis that they were Chinese. Mm. Not because they did something wrong, mm. but on the basis that they were... In fact, it's wrong for me to say that they were Chinese. They were descendants of Chinese. Right. I mean, there were a, a quarter of these people, their grandparents had never lived in China. Mm. They'd lived in they'd lived in the United States for 70, 80, 100 years wow. and so on. So they're Americans. They're not Chinese. But when that word citizenship gets applied to people who are not white Americans, descendants of European American uh, uh, European people, that word citizen, even though it's spelled the same, it doesn't mean the same thing. Right. It means something different when it's a, a person of color. So. My point in, in, in talking about this is you can't understand the, the Tulsa uh, uh, riots unless you understood that this was a riot in which white people en masse uh, arrayed themselves to, uh, uh, to engage in a massive murder and assault on black people because they were black. You can't understand the Tulsa race riot unless you understand it from that perspective. But Ron DeSantis and his ilk in the United States— they're doing this in Iowa and places all over the country, saying you can't teach, you know, uh, uh, you can't use the word black when you teach about the Tulsa riot. What you have to do is say, you know, that uh, there was a, a time period where there was limited resources, recession was going on, and there were some park pockets in, in, in Oklahoma where people had cash, and there were other pockets where people didn't have cash. And so the people that didn't have, uh, that, that had cash, uh, excuse me, people that didn't have cash went to go rob people who, who had cash mm. and you know some of that robbery took place in Tulsa, you know, Oklahoma, and they burned down a lot of places. It was a terrible thing. Let's go on to the rest of history. So that's their excuse. That's the excuse. Right. That's so they, in excuse. other words, they're just they're giving you another way to tell the story that does not have the word black in it, does not have the word race in it, does not have the word African in it. That's what they're doing. But by doing that, you miss the entire story. Right. Because if you learn the story the way that I learned the story, one of the things that you would have come to a conclusion about is that the most important thing that took place in that Tulsa, uh, 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 Oklahoma riot was not just the murder of all of those people, as horrible as that was. It was the fact that you had a community of African people who proceeded out of folks that uh, uh, migrated away from the plantation south who built a community of African people in which they had their own economy. They had their own uh, system of being able to provide goods and services uh, to themselves. As a consequence of that, they became virtually a, uh, uh, an independent body of people living in Tulsa, Oklahoma. They had a velocity of money, to show you what, what I mean by that, I don't know if you know what I mean by the philosophy of money. It means that when a dollar comes into your pocket from your paycheck, where does that dollar go? Does that right. dollar stay in your pocket? Oh, in the community. Does right. it stay in your neighborhood? Right. Does it stay in your city? Does it stay in your county? And if the dollars that you, you make only stay in your, your community one time, you're going to be a fairly vulnerable community. Anytime something bad happens economically, it's going to be like, you know, tuberculosis happened to you. Mm -hmm. So uh, in, in Tulsa, Oklahoma, they had a dollar velocity of 36 times. A dollar turned over in their community 36 times. That meant that when somebody working on a farm, you know, in Oklahoma got paid, they went back to Tulsa. They bought groceries in, in Tulsa. They bought flowers in Tulsa. They mm -hmm. bought hardware in, Tul in Tulsa. They bought their gas in Tulsa. The people that they bought from, they bought their goods and services from other black people. And the people that they bought from bought their goods and services from other black people. And they hired 
other black people. Right. And so a dollar just turned over a lot of times. My understanding is that this is the, the highest dollar velocity in a Ms. intact community. Mr. Hare, did they have schools in other yeah, things? Yeah, they had there? schools. They had schools. Banks, they, they had, had undertakers. Banks. They had real estate agents. They had insurance. They had their own banks. You know, a, a, a real honest-to-goodness community. That's yeah. what they had created. And money was in that community. That was the story of Oklahoma, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Yeah. If that story was taught and then the the massacre, the race riot that took place against African people in Tulsa, Oklahoma, was taught within the context of the economic and social and uh, 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 development of Tulsa, the, the black community in Tulsa, if it was taught in that context, you would have black people emulating the model of what had been taking right. place yeah. in Tulsa, Oklahoma, in addition to having ugly feelings about the terrible crime that was committed against them in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Well, Mr. Hare, let me just uh, kind of chime in on this. First and foremost, um, I, uh, I didn't know anything uh, about... Uh, a black Wall Street or anything. This goes right. This goes out to my cousin. Uh, he just passed away, Brian Daniels, and mm -hmm. he educated me on this. Mm -hmm. I just bought a book about it the other day, and um, but what it comes down to for me is it almost seems like uh, Ron DeSantis stop. And even though I know he didn't have anything to do with it, stop woke act and all of that. It goes so far back. Because there was nothing being taught in the schools about nothing. any of this kind of nothing. stuff. Nothing. And, you know, me as a as a citizen, I'm the citizen here. Right. You know what I mean? I'm looking and I'm saying, this is something that we have to definitely get rid of. Stop The Stop Woke Act and not teaching it. See, we, we have to know our history in order to be able to deflect or not relive it again. And um, I am, I'm just at a point where, for me, I, you know, this particular subject, you know, it's it's something that should be taught. It, you know, I asked you a little bit ago if you and I'm so I appreciate you bringing this up. Mm -hmm. I asked you about speaking on this, and it, it means a lot. You and know. so, it, I, and I give this one as an example because it's so easy to understand. You know why it was so important that you teach the Tulsa, Oklahoma exper experience correctly. Teach it as the history that it is. Yes, sir independent of how you feel about it. You know, mm -hmm. in other words, if, if if you have some racial feelings or some other kind of feelings about it, whatever that is, that doesn't change the fact that there is a history here and there are facts that make up that history. Yes, sir. And you can't understand the history without looking at the actual facts. You have to know. When you look yeah. at those actual facts, it points you in some directions in terms of what te history teaches you. Well, that's the value of history. It right, teaches you. Right. Yes, Mr. yes. And, and I think we were we we didn't know our history and they made sure that we didn't know. But also, other than um, Wall Street, Greenwood and Tulsa, there were many other communities. I've heard about community people having area land area where they right. have parks, uh, many, right. many communities that was built. And somehow the white folks came in. We'll talk to destroyed in mind, it. four and a half million black people lived on plantations in the south at the end of world war or at the end of the civil war four and a half million african people lived there something in the area of 60 percent of them left the plantation south and they moved other places some went to pennsylvania some went to well virginia was kind of a plantation area too but some went to Oklahoma, a lot went to Oklahoma, a lot went further. Some went to Kansas City or, or, or the state, uh, uh, the, uh, the state of, of uh, Kansas and the state of Missouri. They, they moved any place they could, they could where they could set up uh, uh, a, 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 a living economy for themselves, that they could set that up and live uh, without the oppression of the Ku Klux Klan and all this other kind of stuff that was being done to African people. Yeah at the uh, following uh, of the Civil War. Real quick, Mr. Go ahead. Um, did the Klan follow? And did they go out to these uh, places? They have Klan chapters everywhere. Binghamton, New York, had one of the earliest Klan chapters in the country. In Binghamton, New yep. York. Lockport. <laughs> mm. They used to have a Klan parade 
Is that in, right? in Lockport. So, I mean, th th this is not like s uh, isolated incidents. Mm -hmm. This is the norm. This yeah. is what was going on in this country. And why it happened was you had all of these African people who clearly did not deserve to be enslaved, who now became citizens because what else do you do with them? What do you do? You take four and a half million people and say, y'all got to go back to places that you've never heard of before, that you've never been before. Although they did try that, too. They, well, they, the American colonization movement, but it didn't work out very well. They sent, I believe it was something like thirteen to 20,000 African people were sent to uh, Liberia and Sierra Leone uh, to establish uh, American African colonies, you know, in Africa to repatriate, you know, African people to those areas and get rid of them you know, from the United States. But the African people who lived in Sierra Leone and lived in Liberia, who didn't call those areas Sierra Leone <laughs> and Liberia because those are American names that were given to these, these areas. Those are not the names that the people that live there uh, are called that space. But they attacked the African people that were, that were uh, uh, emigrated into uh, Sierra Leone and Liberia because the black people who already lived in Africa saw these American Africans wearing American clothes, speaking English, you know, talking about they were American Christians. And these folks that lived already in the area, they were either, you know, uh, 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 nativist, you know, religions or they were uh, uh, Muslims. And they didn't play that game. They said, who are you all? We don't know you. You're invaders. And they they called the black people white people. <laughs> wow. See, but you can't, again, the Ron DeSantis type people would have you talk about the fact that immigration took place or emigration from the United States to Sierra Leone and Liberia without putting it into the context that this was done because whites in the United States wanted to get rid of black people who were freed from slavery and now lived in the United States. They wanted to, to, to send those people, well, even before the, the end of slavery, they wanted to send those people back to uh, the continent of Africa, regardless of where they came from, whether they had any relationship with uh, uh, any particular community in Africa, they just wanted to send them back. They didn't want to tell you this in, in that context because Ron DeSantis feels that that would make white children feel bad if they yeah. heard that that's why you did it. Now, th this is you're supposed to feel bad. The reason why if somebody rapes somebody, you you record it, you know, you arrest a person, you you build evidence on the person, you try the person, you convict the person, you put the person in jail and you create a public record. Why do you do that? So that other people would say, did you see what happened over there? That guy raped that lady over there. And, man, they did all kind of horrible things. And he's still in prison, been in prison for the last 54 years. That would make you motivated uh, when I feel like raping somebody. Nope, nope, nope. nope I'm, not, I'm not going out. It, it ain't worth 54 years of my life. It, rape, rape can't do that. <laughs> That's the purpose of history, right? So you can't learn history unless you actually learn the history. Right. Now, I said all of that because I was trying to get into my understanding about this uh, NATO meeting in uh, 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 Vilnius uh, uh, in, in Europe that, that's taking place. And I think this is the last day of the NATO summit uh, that's going on right now. And the big issue that is under the undercurrent for this NATO meeting is the Ukraine. Uh, their president, uh, Vladimir uh, Zelensky, is insisting that the NATO alliance uh, that that it actually announced publicly that it is inviting Ukraine into NATO. It won't formally receive NATO membership until it uh, 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 completes uh, or, or meets a number of conditions. But just having that statement that the NATO alliance is uh, 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 inviting Ukraine into NATO Zelensky feels that this is really important for the posture of Ukraine in relation to Russia. Well, now, of course, the, the the Russians may feel like, oh, 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 you're going to put another uh, a Western country on on my border, and you just want me to accept that. 
That's exactly what you're being told to do. You got to accept that. Yeah. Right. So we need to understand this in a context. The Russians say that Ukraine is a part of Russia, has always been a part of Russia. Not a single person I have spoken to who was not an, a, a historic uh, uh, a, academ academic person has been able to even construct in their own words how this came to be. What, they don't even get it. They just the, the most they can think of about this is that there used to be the Soviet Union. Ukraine was a part of the Soviet Union. The Soviet Union broke up. Ukraine was its own country. And the Russians are trying to get that country back. Not understanding that from the Russian perspective, not your perspective, from the Russians' perspective, in 1700, there was a convention, a convention of Russian federated states. Among those Russian federated states was the Ukraine. The Ukraine was a part of the Russian Federation by convention, by a constitution in 1700, 300 years ago, 323 years ago. Ukraine was a part of the Russian Federation. Right. So the Russians are not lying. I know that, you know, you've even heard me say this, right? Yeah. I've been wrong on this in the past as well. The Russians are not lying when they say that Ukraine is a part of us, is a part of the Russian Federation. Now, they're, they're lying from the perspective that they were a part of you. They're not a part of you anymore, but they were a part of you. Mr. Hare. Go ahead. Can I, can I add an analogy? Mm hmm Okay. <clears throat> you got to admit and agree that Ukraine was part of Russia. Right. Um, Russians feel as if they have a right to the Ukraine. Um, the analogy is this. It's almost as if to say, I've been, let's just say a, there's a man, he's been with a woman for a certain amount of time. Mm -hmm. He married her. Then they got divorced. Mm -hmm. This particular man might still feel like he may have a claim to this woman, mm -hmm. but he really doesn't anymore. Mm -hmm. This woman has moved on, and you know what I mean. That's that in itself states that she's free now. She don't she don't need to deal with this gentleman anymore. So it's the same thing with the Ukraine and, and Russia. The, this is my analogy. Right. I, I would just uh, amend that a little bit and say that no, she didn't get a divorce. She does what we always do because we don't want to pay for the divorce because divorces cost money. Okay. Separated. Right? So she got separated. Right. Right? Okay, separated. And, and and then she got another dude. Right. Another guy right? involved. And had another kid, you know, by another yeah. dude, right? Yes, sir. They even bought a house together, you know, right. and so on. So now the original husband says, I'm still your husband. I'm still your husband. Right. 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 You, right. I don't care what kind of house you got. Right. I don't care how many other kids you got. You're still my wife. Right. right? So I'm, I'll destroy all that. That's what's going on. You got me right on the the the, 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 the nail on the head, Norm. That, yes, that's sir. exactly what's going on with Ukraine. Hey, Mr. Hare, can I take a pause? I got a caller I want to introduce. Is that Oh, okay? sure. Yeah. All right. So we got Neldria on the phone call, y'all. She's doing a 24 hours continuous worship called a revolution of love called love illusion on july 21st 22nd 5 p.m to 5 p.m is on broadway in the corner of good year so i'm gonna let her talk welcome neldria welcome listen i have listened mr Air, mr nate it was wonderful listening to you i've one i've listened to your dialogue um <laughs> many of the things that i have actually researched on my own you were talking about so um it was very informative very nice. Thank, thank you. Nice. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> really appreciate um, it. So, yes. Yeah, so, I am, my name is Nell. Everyone calls me Nell. Um, I kind of have an assignment to go to the most neglected part of the city that everyone, it's like the wasteland. They, they've named it, they used to name, they used to, uh, up until a year ago, it used to be called Sin City. It was uh, Chirac. It was, you know, mm. place like nobody cared anything about this place. Mm -hmm. And um, I kind of had a burden for it. I just began to go out there. And my me my best, my message to them was just that they weren't forgotten. I wasn't going out there preaching the gospel, but I was just demonstrating the gospel. I, I was just demonstrating. I, I, I showed them that they cared. I told them that they cared without ever 
picking up, you know, uh, putting on a soapbox and preaching a message. Yeah, Neldra, you go there every week, right? Every week or something? I go there. I, I go there every Friday. Every, every Friday I'm right. there. So this particular event is a revolution. And, and honestly, what you're talking about with a lot of the things that's going on in our country, it is time for a revolution. Mm -hmm. You know, and there's a scripture in the Bible. It's in um, Song of Solomon 8 and 6. And um, it talks about love is stronger than the grave. And so that's a revolution. A revolution is coming against a system. So I truly believe that love has the ability to change systems that causes mindsets for people not to be free, whether it be free in politics, free in religion, free, free from the identity crisis that so many have, just having freedom to be who you were ordained to be. And so that's what this whole thing is all about. And I, I'm, I just use the simple thing that I believe the Lord gave me, which was worship and intercession. So it's 24 hours of continuous worship um, that is nonstop that we believe will make a huge impact. So it's simple and, and might sound crazy, but we, I have a lot of, I have a lot of belief that there's going to, this change is going to shift, that there's going to be shifting change that, that's going to be fruit of that. So. So you know, I welcome all of you to come, and and I hope I see you there, and God bless you all. Yeah, we look forward to it. I just want to speak to a little bit of Scripture to what you just said. There's a Scripture that says that where there, where there are two or more gathered in my yeah. name, now I shall be in the midst of them. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, right? sir. And whatever they shall ask, it shall be. Hallelujah. Right? Yes, sir. So if, it, if, if that would happen with two or three gathered together, what happens if there are two or three hundred gathered together? Woo. What happens if there's two or three thousand gathered together? Yes. What if there's two or three hundred thousand gathered together? Glory. We can change the world with the power of our faith. Yes, we can. Uh, she's yes. excited. You got excited. <laughs> Mr. Yeah, stop it. You got, you got excited. Yes. We have a church over here. Yes. But see, see, she touched the priest in me. See, I, I got a lot of pieces in me. One of my pieces is a priest. Right? She touched the priest in me. You know what? You, it's, I, I have to, now that I know about this show, I'm going to listen all the time. I love your conversations. I really do. But, you know, it's, it's very rare that you find our people that want to talk about things like that, especially about other countries. Because all those other countries affect us. Yeah. Yep. You know, I was in yeah. the military. And and so I went over to Iraq, the, you know, at the, the very first time. Mm -hmm. And I remember them saying, listen, the, w the reason why they're telling the American people why we over here, that's not why we over here. And the guy, the commander, not not the president, but the guy that was over the, um, over the Department of Defense, mm -hmm. he said, listen, no, I'm taking my soldiers out of here. Cause this is blood money, and he yep. told, and he told Papa, he told Bush Senior, he said you're going to end up coming back because you ain't handled this yep. right. Mm. Yep. See, the, and so the, the, the one thing you can't. Any of the things that's happened, I'm sorry. Uh, no, I'm just going to say one thing you can't do is to colonize another country if you're not going to go live in that country. You, you, you can't colonize me from over there. <laughs> come on, come on. <laughs> like you go, you like you go press a button or turn a dial or something, and, then, and that's gonna colonize me. That dog don't hunt. I've been there. I know that dog don't hunt. Right? You come back with no no bird, no nothing. Right? And so, in 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 this a uh, 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 way of of, of us just un understanding things, right? We have to learn the actual history of the places and spaces that yes. we are engaged with. Yes, yep. yes sir. Yes, From sir. their term, yes. on their yes. terms, yes. right? Yes. Not on yes. your terms, yep. on their right. terms. Yes. Yep, yep. That's if you're actually yes. trying to solve a problem. But if you're just well, trying you to know. con people, see, yeah, then, you then you just make up propaganda to justify why you're doing what you're doing. Right. See, y'all my kind of people, propaganda. So <laughs> I'm a, I'm, I got to go, but I'm going to throw something out there for you all to discuss Friday. So, what are you all, what is your thought about what's going on with the U.S. dollar and all these things that, that, that they want to do with, 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 with that, they're not that they want to do, that they are doing with our currency? Well, you know, because currency manipulation. That is huge. Yeah, currency manipulation is one of the standard 
uh, uh, tactics that the uh, Jerome Powell's, the Federal Reserve type people use uh, to, 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 to try to bend economies in the United Correct. States favor at different points in time. So when you have a period where there is inflation, what you really want is for your dollar to increase in value so that you need fewer dollars to buy stuff in an inflationary environment where it's costing more to buy stuff. If you can, if your dollar is more, worth more today than it was yesterday and prices have gone up, you can still buy the same number of things with that, you know, enhanced dollar value. When you don't need, when, you, you, when you're in an uh, 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 a, a environment where you don't have inflation and you're trying to create, you know, more profit for yourself, then you want the dollar to become lower in value so that people want to buy more stuff. Uh, 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 if, dollars if dollars are valued less, it takes more dollars to buy stuff. Correct. Right? Correct. And if dollars are value, uh, 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 valued more, you need less dollars to buy stuff. So when you're in an environment where you need to consume, you need dollars that are more valuable. When you're in, in an environment where you're not consuming, you need dollars that are less valuable because that's to your, your interest. So there's this game that's being played, you know, in a macro economy. Uh, and, and we're not a part of that discussion. We're in the discussion about what the price of gasoline is. But we're not, we're not in the discussion about the value of, of a dollar and what, what is causing the changes and, and who, who benefits from the value of uh, 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 the dollar. Correct. So, yeah, you're talking the right language. We, we, we have to learn economics. We got to learn uh, history. We have to learn math. You know, we have to learn the dynamics of what makes a business successful and what makes it unsuccessful. We, we've got to learn a lot of things. It takes a lot. You're going to live a life. Today's uh, human being is going to live to be 90, 100 years old. You got a long time. You got to support your life. You should spend a lot of time learning the things you need to learn to be able to support your life. You know, this is not going to happen in that. a minute. <laughs> I love that. I love that. <laughs> Can I take that from you, Mr. You can Andrew? take that, gonna, write that I'm down. Gonna, I'm going to say, I'm, I'm going to give you credit for saying it. Sure. <laughs> That's what we do, Americans. We take. <laughs> no, 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 no. We capitalize. We capitalize. Okay. capitalize. That's right. That's, that's, that's a right. different word, Mr. Hill. Act like we understand it. That's, that's, where, it, that's where it comes from. <laughs> Hey, y'all, I, I just wanted to um, make sure we got to go off. We got to go to a break. But Love Relation is July 21st, 22nd, 5 p.m. to 5 p.m. Continuous praise and worship. Locations Broadway at corner of Goodyear um, Street. Um, it's in the lot, y'all. So it's free. Come on down. Get your praise on. Thank you, Neil right. Drea. Thank, Thank you, Neil Drea. So much. Bye -bye. Yes, Thank you, Neil. God bless you. Yes, and yes, good, yes, good yes, success. Yes, We're going to try to be there. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you so much. All okay, right. Bye -bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye -bye. And thank you all there for listening to us and supporting us. We're going to take a quick break and talk to our sponsors. So don't go away. We will see you on the other side of the break here at Living for the People at 91.3 FM WBNY. They are our love bugs and companions. They are our pets, our family, and they make life better. When we face unexpected challenges, so do our pets. That's why we're on a mission to support people and their pets. Whether donating a bag of kibble, sharing an Instagram post of a lost cat, or welcoming a foster pet into your home, every bit of kindness counts. Visit petsandpeopletogether.org to learn how to be a helper in your community. Brought to you by Maddie's Fund, the Humane Society of the United States, and the Ad Council. Ninety one point three FM WBNY is proud to present Democracy Now! with Amy Goodman. Welcome to Democracy Now! Award winning investigative journalism. Is the NRA imploding? Providing relevant analysis that makes you think. Secret State Department documents, including evidence of U.S. war crimes. Fact finding reports you will not hear elsewhere. Democracy Now! airs Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. on 91.3 FM, WBNY, Buffalo. <laughs> All right, welcome back to Living for the People. This is L. Nathan here, your host. 
We're here with Norm MacArthur. He's our in-studio audience of one. Welcome back, Norm. Thank you, Mr. Hare. And we're here with our engineer, our IT, you know, our, our genius, who <laughs> allows us to be able to do the live streaming of the program, Willie H. Welcome back, Willie. Welcome, everybody, to Living for the People with L. Nathan here. Make sure you guys call in 716-878-5104. That's 716-878-5104. We have a great conversation, discussion always going on. Yep. And so I wanted to get into this the NATO meeting that, uh, that took place in uh, Lithuania. And, and I, I'm saying this because I'm betting that only eight people in our audience even know where Lithuania is. <laughs> You're probably right, Mr. Hay. <laughs> See, we're, we're, we've spent 43 or $44 billion supporting Ukraine's war effort against Russia. But most of us don't even understand where U Ukraine is, let alone understand where Lithuania is. Mm -hmm. And why would Lithuania be the place they would have a meeting of NATO to discuss something that has, you know, world w war proportionate, you know, uh, uh, implications? Why would that be? Well, because Lithuania is a part of those freed states that were a part of the uh, uh, Soviet Union. There were 15 countries that were adopted uh, 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 or, or, or um, I don't want to say conquered, but they were absorbed uh, by the uh, uh, Soviet Union in, uh, I think it was in 1921, excuse me, uh, uh, in 1944, 1945, were uh, absorbed in the Soviet Union. There were 17 other countries that were a part of what was the, um, the, 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 the they referred to it as the Russian Tsarist Empire. Uh, there were 17 other countries that were a part of the Russian Tsarist Empire. Uh, Ukraine was a part of that Russian Tsarist Empire. I just need for us to just reconnect again for at least that 300 year period, 323 year period, from 1700 to 2023, at least during that period, Ukraine was a part of Russia. They spoke Russian, they dressed Russian, they acted Russian, they ate Russian, they did Russian stuff, they fought on Russia's side in any wars against the Huns or whoever it was that showed up you know, on their doorstep. That's the reality, right? So I understand Vladimir Zelensky's posture that well, that was yesterday. Today, we're a, a, a separate nation. I just want us to understand as, as we're thinking through how we feel about the politics and the uh, geopolitical relationships that are underway here that are costing the United States something in the area of $4 billion a month. That's a lot of money. You should know what's going on. You should know right. why this is taking place. Right. So NATO was established, as I said before, to sort of blunt the possibility of Russia, which had become a communist country, uh, for it to take over uh, more and more of Europe, right. right? That's what NATO was was constructed for. So when World War uh, One took place, Russia was on the side of, of Prussia. Remember Russia, Prussia? No, you don't remember. Germany didn't used to be Germany. Germany used to be a bunch of smaller states. The largest of those small states was Prussia, the, Habs the Habsburg Empire. I'm hoping that you all catching on. They, they did teach history when you all were in school, right? I'm not making this up. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, Mr. Hare, let's be it gets fair. A little, it gets let's, a little hard now. Let's, let's be fair. Most of us, you know, um, first of all, they didn't teach us history, and then a lot of us didn't go out hey, to well, he, look he for point, history. He's pointing us at us. I know he is, That's, but I'm trying to make it like most of us not him. Oh, oh, he, oh, he sorted oh, the history oh, okay. when he was a young man. Uh, we we'll, we'll just keep trotting out the little facts as we go along okay. here. <laughs> You're supposed to know this, right? I know, I know. I okay. know, I know. And, but the point is that the... Uh, 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 the, the Federation began to fall apart that became a part that the Soviet Union was the center of. Those 17 states that were a part of the Tsarist uh, 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 Empire, they did not leave the Soviet Union when the Soviet Union broke apart. They still, at least as far as the Russian Federation was concerned, they felt that all of those former uh, Tsarist you know, uh, uh, countries... Well, 
were still a part of the Russian Federation. Okay. It's just that the, the Tsarist countries didn't feel that way anymore. Mm. Mr. Hare, when you say Tsarist, um, is that because all of these com uh, countries uh, continue to be under Tsar rule? Under the rule of the Romanovs. The, the Tsar. Right. Okay. The Romanovs Romano. was the last Tsar yeah. okay. uh, a dynasty in, in, in Russia back in the 18, late 1800s, early 1900s. Yeah. You had the Romanovs. And they were replaced by the Bolsheviks. You know, the Bolshevik re Revolution, which were the sort of the, See, the most of us don't know those names. The pre communist the, 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 the Bolsheviks with, with Nikolai the, Lenin and all of Oh, Nikolai. Oh, 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 he did. No, no, not yet. Nik Nikolai oh, okay, wasn't here okay, yet. Okay, I, I tried okay, to throw okay, something but, in this. But, 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 but you're, in, you're in the right water. <laughs> right, okay. Right. You know, you're, you're in one of those Ohio River I'm tributaries. Totally, I'm totally yeah. clueless. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> but. But it's important for us to understand that that context, okay. right? Yes, sir. So there's there's the 15 satellite countries that included Yugoslavia, the the Baltic republics, you know, and so on, mm -hmm. that that were annexed by the Soviet Union. When the Soviet Union broke apart in 1991 under Gorbachev, those 15 countries automatically became free countries because what they were a part of no longer existed. The constitution that created the Soviet Union no longer existed. Therefore, those countries that were a part of that com that compact were no longer a part of the compact because there was nothing to be in a compact with. Right. But you had 17 other countries that were part of the Russian uh, uh, czarist uh, uh, empire. Okay. Right? You look at the Chinese empire, you know, the Russian Empire, the Egyptian Empire, Roman Empire, you had a Russian Empire, which was much bigger, by the way, than Rome. I know they didn't teach you all that. I know mm. they teach you that Rome was the hottest thing since Hindu gym shoes and whatnot. Yeah, they did. And, and we appreciate, you know, the assertion. Uh, but if you looked at the landmass of the Tsarist Empire, it was two or three times the landmass of wow. the Roman Empire. Yeah. But that's another story. That's just... But it's called history. Yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> right? See, and if you don't teach history correctly, you miss important things. Right. So those other 17 countries that were a part of the former Tsarist Empire, many of them stayed with Russia, the Russian Federation. Some didn't want to stay. Mm. Chechnya, where, you know, Willie H. and his friends built a, <laughs> uh, a, a nuclear power facility, you know, over there. Oh, yeah. Supposedly, you know, to provide energy, you know, for that side of the Russian uh, 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 nation, the Federation. But you see what happens when you build nuclear power plants in places that don't really like you. Mm. A day may come when they may say, you know, we could do a little harm to yeah. uh, these Russians. Yes, sir. We have the nuclear weapons. We have the nuclear, you know, uh, 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 energy facility. Mm -hmm. uh, we can be ugly over right. here. And Ugly came to Chechnya. Wow. Do you all remember that? Yes, sir. Ugly came to Chechnya, and they wound up having to evacuate, you know, like a third of wow. Chechnya as a as a country had to be evacuated yeah. and, and really have not been able to be uh, 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 repatriated to the places they had to evacuate from because that land is so poisoned now because mm. of what happened with their nuclear reactors there. Oh, did it? I, I don't know about that, Mr. Hale. I was probably it, way ahead. It, it melted down. Wow. Well, so you what, know what, what happens. Was, what was what, that called, Mr. Hare? What was the name of the um, uh, the place? I don't remember the name of the nuclear plant. I, 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 I'm, I'm it's on the tip of my tongue. Right. I, I, I just remember it as Chechnya. Yeah. You know, yeah. that was the name of the country that, that it was in. My point is that the people who live in Chechnya that was a part of the Tsarist uh, 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 empire, when the Soviet Union fell apart, the people that lived in Chechnya didn't want to stay related to Russia. Ooh. But Russia put muscle on them and said, you got to stay a part of us because we're still the Russian czarist uh, 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 mm. empire. So you had a lot of countries that are, that are in the Russian Federation on that basis. And many of those countries don't want to be in a part, oh. of, a, a part of the Federation. Uh, Ukraine is one of them. Exactly. Right? Okay. So Belarus, for example, uh, Belarus is a part of the Russian Federation They've always been in a brother-sister relationship, you know, or a son-daughter relationship, whatever it is, you know, uh, uh, with, with Russia. They were kind of on Russia's side in uh, Russia trying to take over Ukraine. Mm. Ukraine is saying, I don't care what you are as far as this, this czarist, you know, empire is concerned, but we left that shit behind. We, 
we're not in that ship anymore. We got our own ship. Yeah, we got some Russians here that I've talked to, and when they speak about Russia and Ukraine, they, they talk about them like that. They're brothers and sisters. Yep, yep. They, they do. I miss so, it. Yeah, I just, uh, Chernobyl. Chernobyl, that was what it was. Thank yes, you. Sir. Thank yes, you. Sir. Very good. No. Excellent. You got that machine, right? I've, got, I've got something called Google. <laughs> he, he, got, <laughs> he, he, got, he got the AI. He's got the AI, AI machine. Right? For. <laughs> so over time, you know, uh, 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 the, the Russian or, or the Soviet Union fell apart. But the, 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 the issue here is that the Soviet Union ceased to exist. Many of the European and some of the U.S. policymakers some of your Marjorie Taylor Greene type people, your Paul Gosar type people, your Matt Gates type people, your uh, uh, Kevin McCarthy type people, people that, you know, seem to have limited uh, uh, intellect. You know what limited intellect means, right? <laughs> you can count one and one and get to two, but if you had to count one to three to get to four, It'd be you, difficult. You, sweat starts, you know, popping up on your forehead and whatnot. Those kind of people, they think that, we no longer need NATO to defend the landmass of Western Europe from the possibility of Russian expansion into Western Europe because, you know, the war, World War II was over and, you know, the Soviet Union fell apart. So we don't need, you know, all of these constructs. We don't need to be spending all this money, you know, putting soldiers on the ground uh, as a defensive uh, 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 or a line of defense in Europe against possible Russian uh, aggression. So, Mr. Hare, is that what this is all about? This is about Russia building their forces, their landmass, their power? Is that what this is about? Russia the wants war? to recreate the Tsarist empire. Mm. And anything else they can take along the way, mm -hmm. they want to get that, too. Right. But it, it's, it's, I, I don't know how to put this in your head to, 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 to where it makes intuitive sense. But think of it like this. The uh, Roman Empire begins uh, roughly 30 years before the birth of the Christ, mm -hmm. what they call the Common Era. Okay. That's when the Roman Empire begins. Mm -hmm. It gets to its mature stage around 300, 330, 360 or so A.D. Well, now it's in, in sort of its biggest stage, right? right? So think of that Roman Empire. You got Spain. You got southern France. Mm -hmm. You got uh, 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 Greece. You know, you got Italy, you know, you got all of these places. You got North Africa, mm -hmm. you know, Tunisia, Algeria, and so on. All are a part of this Roman Empire. Right. Then let's suppose that something happens and the empire falls apart. Mm -hmm. And then 100 years later, people start to collect themselves together and say, you know, we were really hot stuff. When all of us were in one empire, mm -hmm. you know, so let's let's get ourselves back into one empire oh, again. Oh. So you're going to have some people that want to be a part of the old empire, right. Right. want to be able to puff their chest out and say, we're the hottest hot dog, you know, in, right. in, 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 in a hot dog basket. But you got other people are going to be saying, no, we've been gone for 100 years. We really don't want to go back. We you know, like where we're at. So if you think you're strong, you try to muscle people like the Russians did to the people in Chechnya. They muscled those people and made them stay in the Russian Federation. Mm. That is something that it, it grates at the craw of some people. There are some people in Chechnya that felt we want to stay. We want to go back to the Russian Federation. We mm -hmm. want to stay in the Russian Federation because that makes us a part of something much bigger right. than just the uh, uh, landmass of Chechnya. Mm -hmm. But there are a lot of other people that don't buy that. They want to be a part of... Of, of of themselves and let Russia be a part of itself. Mm -hmm. hey, um, Mr. Here, um, I just want to bring up something. Uh, we spoke about this the other day. Now you know Russia is currently involved in this in this war right now, and they're not really um, just totally wiping up uh, um, wiping them out like they, everybody thought they might. Now it seems as if the Ukraine is pretty formidable, you know, against Russia. But if they were all to come together and and align themselves um, in a grouping against, you know, to, to, to stay safe and to be able to keep their positions against um, uh, the Russian Federation, mm -hmm. I think they'd be all right. You know, well, they, from the Ukrainian position, that's what they think they're doing. 
their position is if we can become aligned with NATO, become a part of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, mm -hmm. then instead of us be standing by ourselves, mm -hmm. right. there are 17 countries in the North Atlantic, oh no, I'm sorry, 32 countries, I believe, are in the North Atlantic Treaty you know, uh, 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 or, or, or organization in that alliance. If they become the number 32 or number 33, whatever the, you know, the, uh, the, the total number is, then they would be in what you just said. They'd be in a federation right. of a much bigger you know, a body of people that would then help them be able to defend themselves from something like the, the Russian Federation. Okay, real quick, aren't most of the countries or uh, a, a big percentage of the countries in NATO already helping the Ukraine? Every single NATO country is helping I, Ukraine. I thought so, okay. Every, yeah. every one of them is. Yeah, okay. So, so um, the, the Ukrainian position, however, is if you were in NATO... There is a uh, a rule in the Constitution that creates NATO, in, in the convention that creates NATO, that says that every NATO country is automatically on call to defend any other NATO country that is attacked by somebody who is not a part of NATO. Got it. Yeah. That you just, you cannot attack, if you attack one, you're attacking everybody. Yeah, yeah. That includes the United States. So somebody steps on the toe of, uh, uh, say, Poland, somebody steps on Poland's toe, they say, ouch, in Washington, D.C. Yeah. And then a fist comes from someplace in America to hit whoever it was that stepped on Poland's yeah. toe. Okay, right? okay, yeah. That's the reality. So that's how Poland has been able to wrest themselves away from the Soviet Union. Remember, Poland has a very large border with Russia. Yeah. And they were conquered by Russia maybe 20 times in the course of their history and whatnot, right? Yeah. And so the Polish have, have had a lot of fear of Russia for a long period of time. Right. But now they've been independent of Russia. Uh, they've gotten success after Gorbachev. Uh, they've gotten success to be able to stand up as an independent state. They've now been, they have a very professional army now. They have a uh, an organized economy. Their 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 uh, whatever they call their dollar, you know, seems to have a uh, uh, consistent value. I mean, they're they're a strong stand up state right now. They're an ally you want to have, you yeah. know, right now. You know, in Poland, right? You know what I when I look at this and I I kind of see the way you've just configured things. <clears throat> it basically just boils down to building strong alliances. And when you build strong alliances, you protect yourself, and then these alliances protect each other. You, you know, that's pretty much what it is. So so that gets us into this policy position that we, we're supposedly struggling through uh, here in the United States. The policy position is, do we consider, do we continue to support everything that we're supporting uh, in the Ukraine? Or do we continue to put all of these dollars out? And for the rest of the European uh, nations that are a part of the NATO uh, alliance, putting all of these dollars out to, between the United States and the other European countries, we're probably putting $7 billion a month out to support uh, 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 the, the, the Ukraine. So the, the issue is, is there a rational value in continuing to support Ukraine this way, or if we just said, listen, we're just going to back away, you know, you still got bows and arrows, you know, and you got rocks, you know, you could be like David and Goliath and, you know, throw a rock and hit a Russian in the head and maybe you knock him out that way. You know, m m maybe that's the way that you, you want to play it. At, at least that's the way some of these people in this country are talking right now. No. And if you do that, what would be the outcome of that? The, I just want to make this point. The okay. outcome is going to be that the Russians will learn from that experience that if we push these NATO people right. hard enough, right. they will back up. Right. They, I mean, it may, it may be costly for us to fight the NATO people, mm -hmm. and maybe I don't want to spend that much money you know, on, on that fight. But I also know that the NATO countries don't want to spend the amount of money they would have to spend to defend themselves from me. So I'll just keep pushing them and pushing them and take as much as I can, then stand still, wait a couple a couple of years, and push and get some more. Yeah. 
Remember what I talked about once before, the paradigm of the tyranny of the uncivilized. The uncivilized people will push you as far as they can before they think you will react. And as soon as they think you're going to react in a way that would hurt them, they slow down. Yeah. And they just act like, okay, okay, we, we're sorry. We didn't mean to act like that. Well, but they keep what they've been stealing. Then three or oh, four sure. or five years goes by, and they come and they steal some more again. Right. And they do the same thing again. Well, that's what the Russians are doing. And you either stop this now or you let it go on. If you don't stop it, this is what you're going to be your future. What's being done by the Russians to Ukraine is going to happen to Lithuania. It's going to happen to Belarus. It's going to happen to uh, Poland. It's going to happen to anybody who's in an adjacent, you know, uh, border country so, to, to Russia. So, Mr. Head, that basically, from what you're saying, we have to support um, Ukraine. It, it, it seems to me that we have no choice. Right, we have no so choice. So rather than arguing about whether or not we're going to support the Ukraine, we should be arguing about what does that support mean? Should we send F-35, you know, fighter jets over there, or should we just use F-14s? Or do we not use any planes at all? Do we send uh, cluster bombs over there, or do we send, you know, 45 automatics? You know, what, what, what do we fight with? We right. should be talking about that. We should not be talking about whether or not we should be defending Ukraine because defending Ukraine is defending Europe and defending Europe is in the interest of the United States. Right. Okay. Yes, sir. So yes, listen, sir. I see uh, the boggle jump drums are going and whatnot. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're letting us know that I'm talking too long. Yeah. So let me let everybody get their chance on the airways. Look forward to talk to you all on Friday, uh, excuse me, on Monday. Here Friday, no, Friday, Friday. What day is today? Wednesday. This is only Wednesday? Only Wednesday. This is Wednesday. I have really lost. <laughs> somebody <laughs> somebody told me at the, at the uh, 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 coffee shop, said, I'll see you on Friday. And I thought he was talking about a week from now. Oh, <laughs> right. I love it. See you all on Friday here right, at Friday. Living for the People at 91.3 FM WBNY. See you all then. <laughs>